Chris here from LearnMoGraph, and today we're gonna to be looking at my top five favorite free plugins for After Effects. First up on our list is FX Console by Video Copilot. This is a life-changing plugin for enhancing your workflow. Once you've downloaded and installed FX Console, you can open it for the first time by going to Window and scrolling down till you see FX Console. From here, you can click the gear icon to enter the settings. This lets you change the theme, assign a keyboard shortcut. In my case, I keep it as Control plus the spacebar, adjust your screenshot settings, and assign shortcuts to different effects to make your workflow even faster. Let's close out of that and give this plugin a whirl. Let's take our scene here and begin adding some effects to it. Let's say we want to add a vignette to the background layer. To access FX Console, select the layer you want to add an effect to and press your keyboard shortcut. And that pops up a modal window. Now we can start typing vignette. This allows us to search through all of the effects and presets and quickly get to the effect we want to use. In this case, we're gonna select CC Vignette and just hit enter, and that automatically applies it to our background layer here. Just to show how quickly you can apply effects, let's add a bunch of effects to our different objects here. So we'll go up to our yellow circle here. We'll apply the scatter effect. We'll crank that up a little bit. And we'll go to our pink square here, control space. We'll do a mosaic on that one. Adjust that to get a nice 8-bit block. We'll go over to our yellow square here and let's apply a blur. Just like that, we have our Gaussian blur applied. We can crank that up. And we'll go to our last big block here and let's apply a liquify effect. And we'll liquify it. The last few features that I use FX Console for all the time are taking screenshots and copying those to my pasteboard, since After Effects doesn't offer a native way to do that. So let's bring up our FX Console again with Control Space, and we're gonna click this little down arrow going into a box here. And this allows us to copy our current frame to the clipboard to save the current frame as a PNG or to save it as a JPEG. And that's much quicker than going up to your composition, save frame as file. The other useful feature around screenshots is the gallery view that FX Console provides. So let's bring that up one more time. And we're gonna press our camera icon here to take a screenshot. And then we're gonna look into our gallery, which is right there. And this loads our screenshot right into the gallery. And if we close that down, and let's say we make some adjustments here, we can scale that up a little bit, move it over. And we'll take another screenshot and pop open our gallery. And now we have both frames in our gallery. And this allows us to export all of our frames as PNGs or JPEGs, which is awesome when you're working on storyboards. As you can see, if you know what effect you want to go for, this plugin can save you tons of time searching through your effects and presets panel just to find the right plugin that you want to use. Next up on our list of essential plugins is another video copilot plugin called Saber. You could probably guess based on the name, but this plugin makes it really easy to add lightsabers to your video. You can play around with the different settings in here to really customize the look that you're going for. You can also use Saber to create a variety of energy beam and fire effects. I just got finished watching Lord of the Rings for the hundredth time, and I thought it would be interesting to try to recreate the Eye of Sauron using only Saber. Number three on our list of top five free plugins is Decompose Text. I know I covered this in my Essential Workflow Plugins video, but it deserves a mention here as well. While it's listed as a name your own price plugin on aescripts.com, you can in fact pay for it to help support the developer in any future iterations of the plugin. Let's pop open the plugin and take a look one more time. We'll go to Window, scroll down to Decompose Text, and we'll drag this panel and we'll just dock it next to our composition window here. As a refresher, this plugin makes it really easy to break your text layers into lines, words, or characters. Let's just quickly add an animation here. So we'll bring up our position property and we'll add a Y position keyframe. We'll move that forward 20 frames and we'll drag this down. We'll select our keyframes, F9 to ease those, Shift F3 to enter our graph editor, and we'll put kind of a hard ease on these. 
And let's just twirl open our opacity property, add a keyframe at the beginning, move forward about 15 frames, add a keyframe at the end, go back to the beginning and set that keyframe to zero. So now we have a nice animation that slides in and fades in pretty quickly. So we're gonna select our text layer, we're gonna go up to decompose into lines, and we're gonna click decompose. And now we have three new text layers and our original text layer that's turned off down here, but we can keep that as a reference layer. And right now we don't have much different going on in our animation, but we can take our layers and we can shift them down a couple frames. And now we have a nice smooth offset animation. We can do the same thing if we wanna break our text layer into words, select words and decompose. And now we have a new layer for every word that was in our paragraph. And a quick way to offset these is to select your first one, scroll down, select your last layer that you wanna work with. Let's move forward one frame and press option right bracket to trim those all to two frames long. And we're gonna right click on these layers, go to keyframe assistant, and sequence layers, and we're just gonna press OK. Now we can hit end on our keyboard to go to the end of our timeline and press option or alt, right bracket again, and that trims them back to the end. Press home to go to the beginning. We'll extend our work area here a little bit. And now when we press play, we have a nice smooth text animation. I usually choose to use this plugin over adding a text animator onto a single layer because it gives you a lot more flexibility in how and when each of these words animates in. Like if you wanted to animate these in as somebody was speaking, we'd wanna shift these down a little bit, which you just can't really get that fine grain control with a regular text animator. The fourth plugin on our list is Export GIF by AE Juiced. After Effects used to have a way to export animated GIFs through Adobe Media Encoder, but several years ago it was removed from the list of available options. Now we need to rely on third-party options to help with this task. There are other paid plugins like GIFGun that can do this too, but this plugin works just as well and it's free. Let's go up to Window and scroll down to AE Juice Export GIF. This gives us a simple interface where we can adjust settings. Inside our settings panel, we get some options here so we can rename our composition. We'll call this AI GIF. We can adjust the frames per second Usually the lower your frames per second, the smaller file size you'll have, but it'll be choppier. We're going to leave this as same as composition at 30 frames per second. We can choose a folder to put it in. In this case, we're gonna leave it right next to our main project in the project folder. We can choose the duration. In this case, we want the entire project for our work area, but you can choose options such as current time indicator to work area end, or current time indicator to composition end. We also have options to overwrite any previously created files. We can resize our GIF, which again affects file size. We can ask export GIF to warn us if the width is going to be bigger than a certain size. Uh, we're gonna leave this off for now. If we have an alpha channel, we can check this to make sure that we have transparency in our GIF. And we're gonna leave this checked that says reveal file in folder. That way we'll open up Finder or Windows Explorer when it's done exporting and you can preview your animation right away. We're gonna hit close and we're just gonna click export GIF. And that gives us this warning window here where we can either choose our active comp, which is the one that we have here, our selected comp, which would be any comps that we have highlighted in our project panel. And we can choose if we just wanna copy it to the clipboard. We're gonna click active comp. And this begins rendering our file and it will render and process and convert itself into a GIF. And when it's all done, it'll open up Finder and we can check out our animation immediately. And now that it's finished rendering out of After Effects and converting to a GIF, it's opened our Finder window where we can preview our animation. The last plugin on our list is a workflow plugin called Rift. There's a lot that this plugin can do to speed up your workflow, but most often I use it for creating staggered or offset animations. So we have our 10 shapes here, and we're gonna add some keyframes to those. So we'll select all of them, click on our stopwatch to set our first keyframe. Let's move forward 15 frames, and we're gonna drag all of these down to the bottom here. And we'll move forward to one second, and we're just going to copy our first keyframe and paste it back because they're all going back to the same Y position. Now when we play this, the shapes move down and back up to their starting position. We can always go through manually and drag these out one by one, but that would take forever. So let's undo that and get back to our starting position. What we wanna do is click and drag to select all of our keyframes. 
We're going to go up to our rift panel here. We're going to turn off our layer option because we don't want to affect the in and out point of our layer. We're going to go up to our rift panel here and we're going to turn off some of the options that are on by default. To see if an option is selected, it has a little green dot underneath it. So we're going to turn off the layer start point. We're going to turn off markers. We're going to turn off layer out point. Or we can turn it off as a group by clicking on the check mark. So we're going to turn off layer because we don't want to affect the in point or out point of our layer. We just want to adjust the keyframes. And we're going to make sure that effect only selected keys is selected. We're going to go down to our shift box here and we're going to shift each of these by five frames. And then we're going to go down to arrange. And here we have options where we can either sequence them or stagger them. I'm going to do sequence and we're going to do them in ascending order from bottom to top. And we're going to leave these as linear for now. And we're just going to click the play button. And now we have a nice offset animation. But we can take this a step further. So we're going to undo that. We're going to select our keyframes again. We're going to go back up to our rift panel. We're going to go down to our arrange box. We're going to change the one to a five. We're going to change linear to both. And this is going to have a nice ease in and ease out, kind of an easy ease. And we're going to change this to quart and we're going to press play. As you can see, our keyframes now have a nice gentle curve in them. We're going to go to the end keyframe here. We're going to press N on our keyboard to mark an out point. And we're just going to play this so we can see what it looks like on repeat. And let's undo that. We'll select these again. And this time we'll shift them by 15 frames and press play. And that gives us a bit more dramatic of a curve. We can do that again. And we can just change this to... And we can change this from quart to sign, which is our standard, which is our standard easy ease. And that gives us a nice gentle curve. We'll mark an out point and press play. can do. You can save different presets in different states depending on whether you want to affect keyframes, endpoints, outpoints, or markers. Or you can select your layers, make sure that our layer box is checked, change our randomize from 0 to 10 and hit play. And that randomizes the order of your keyframes and how they appear. It makes it really easy to create sort of randomized animations. That wraps up my top five favorite free plugins for After Effects. I'll leave links down in the description where you can download any of these plugins. Thank you for sticking around and I'll see you in the next video.